Just off Interstate 44, near Eureka, Missouri, lies a brand new state park. It features a playground, bike trails, and a Route 66 museum. What you won't find is any evidence of what was once the town of Times Beach. No, the town didn't move. It simply doesn't exist anymore. Times Beach was founded in 1925 by the St. Louis Star Times newspaper. If you bought a lot in Times Beach, you got six month subscription to the newspaper. It was named Times after the newspaper and beach because of the Merrimack River, which ran alongside the community. In its first incarnation, Times Beach was modeled as a resort town, a summer retreat for the well-to-do. But by the 1970s, the city had transformed into a lower middle-class suburb of roughly 2,000. The town struggled financially and could never raise enough money to pave its 23 miles of dirt streets and roads. Plagued by dust in the summer months, residents procured the services of a waste oil company to take care of the problem. The neighbors would get together and they would have the streets sprayed just in their area to suppress the dust. And then in 1972, the city contracted with Russell Bliss to spray at will. And he did that in 72 and 73. A lot of little suburbs would uh, hire me to all the roads. I uh, do a lot of little uh, communities. Times Beach was pretty big, and uh, it would take uh, a couple loads to do the whole town. But with all the wear and tear, I'd have to do it maybe once every couple weeks or once a month. But Bliss didn't use just oil for dust control. During the years he sprayed the roads of Times Beach, he used a mixture of industrial waste that he obtained from various suppliers, including the Napaco Chemical Company in Verona, Missouri. Napaco shared the facility in Verona with another company named Hoffman Taft. Hoffman Taft produced the chemical 245T, while Napaco produced hexachlorophene. 245T is the short name for a pesticide which was combined with another pesticide, 24D, and together formed the compound which is commonly known as Agent Orange. Hexachlorophene is an antibacterial agent. It was used until it was banned in soaps, toothpaste, and other medical supplies. Both of these chemical manufacturing processes created a waste stream which was laden with dioxin. Dioxin is a known carcinogen, but in 1971, little was known about its harmful effects, and there were no federal laws in place regarding how to dispose of it or any industrial waste. They could have told me it's cream cheese. I wouldn't know the difference between that and dioxin. It, uh, uh, I wouldn't know what dioxin really was. And at that time, I don't think if I would have put a sign on the side of my truck, I'm hauling dioxin from Verona to St. Louis, I don't think anybody would have known what it was. He hauled tanker trucks of this material where it was mixed in large holding tanks. He then would draw down off of this and use the resulting mixture to spray on unpaved roads, parking lots, and in some cases, horse arenas in order to control dust. 1971 brought the first sign that Bliss's brew was toxic when a number of horses died at an arena he sprayed. The owners of the arena contacted the state health department to seek their help in trying to identify the toxic agent. The Missouri Department of Health then solicited assistance from the U.S. Centers for Disease Control. In 1974, the CDC identified dioxin as the toxic agent responsible for the horse deaths. That drew in officials from the Environmental Protection Agency, which eventually traced the dioxin to the Napaco facility in Verona, Missouri, and to Russell Bliss. We had a list of places where Russell Bliss was alleged to have sprayed dioxin-contaminated waste oil. EPA was able to identify a number of locations to sample, and in fact, we did identify Times Beach as one of the locations. 
Residents of Times Beach were dismayed to learn they'd been living on dioxin-contaminated soil for over a decade. I had no idea what dioxin was. I had no idea what it was used for, how it was manufactured. I only knew that a front page newspaper article said dioxin, the most potent chemical known to man. My name is Russell Martin Bliss. The state made a big taboo to be out of it. They, uh, they said it was the most deadly poisonous known to man. Well, I went before a hearing of a bunch of political people in Jefferson City, and I took my finger to it and tasted it, and never affected me. Because I wasn't told what was in the oil, I wouldn't have known what it was if they had told me what it was. If you want the truth, you could tell me it was some kind of a new jelly, and I'd put it on toast and eat it. I didn't know what dioxin was. I swear to all of you, I had no idea this material was bad. In November of 1982, the EPA took soil samples from Times Beach to ascertain the severity of the dioxin contamination. On December 23rd, just two days before Christmas, their worst fears were realized. EPA was receiving the initial results from the lab sampling that indicated dioxin concentrations as high as 100 parts per billion existed on the roadways. Dioxin is considered hazardous to humans at only one part per billion. Times Beach was abandoned. With their city deemed unlivable, residents lobbied for a buyout. They knew that there was no technology available to clean up the community. And they knew they couldn't move back because it wasn't safe. In 1983, the estranged residents of Times Beach got their wish. The federal government Superfund program, which provides funds for hazardous waste sites, paid residents for their property. Soon after, the state of Missouri disincorporated the city. For over a decade, the hazardous waste site was gated off and patrolled 24 hours a day. The once thriving community was transformed into a ghost town. Finally, in 1997, after the completion of numerous investigations and lawsuits, the EPA embarked on a massive cleanup effort. All standing structures were bulldozed and placed inside a landfill the size of four football fields. The EPA then brought in a massive incinerator to purge the dioxin from the Times Beach soil. That material was excavated and transported by covered trucks and then it would go through a, a double airlock into a material handling facility where the trucks were dumped and managed under very controlled conditions. The material would then be augered in a closed system up into the entry to the incinerator. The gases would be evaporated at a temperature of 1,700 degrees, and then the gases themselves, which contained the dioxin molecules, would flow into a secondary combustion chamber which would actually destroy the dioxin molecules at a temperature of more than 2,100 degrees. Over $200 million later, the cleanup project came to an end. In 1999, Times Beach was reborn as a state park. Today, wildlife flourishes here, showing no ill effects from the deadly dioxin that once permeated the soil. But some of the town's former residents feel they aren't as fortunate. I had eight brothers and one sister, and what we had as children growing up was bruises, scratches, a few, a few stitches, maybe a broken arm. Nothing like my family. Every member of my family was ill with some, something different. Uh, so you have to believe that it's because of the exposure to the chemicals. I felt there was nothing wrong with the oil. I didn't even think about anything being wrong with the oil. Russell Bliss was never found guilty of any criminal behavior resulting from the dioxin contamination. Yet, 
many still see him as the man that killed the city of Times Beach. When you say Deoxin or Times Beach, you don't think about Napaco. You don't think about all the other companies that were involved in it. You think of one thing, Russell Bliss. But to this day, I will say this. I didn't generate it. I didn't make it. I hauled it from there and put it over there. I was a transporter. No more, no less. Times Beach may no longer exist, but the physical and emotional scars of those that lived through its demise endure.